If you didn't catch the previous Unraid video, you can find it in the description down below or one of the cards on the screen. And definitely do check it out. It's a fun little build of Unraid. And we'll walk through in this video, the finish of it combined with all the different things that we use it for. So OG did a wonderful job of helping us swap between all the hard drive trays since they're different between the two cases. Yep, four screws, rubber gaskets, for like nine or 10 drives, fun times. Well, the hard drives in, the parity labels, and yeah, that's um, some of the issues I have with if you don't break off the third pin or put Kapton tape, I've marked those three that I have to do to make sure I get the right power with those. Other ones, I don't have that issue. Got the last slot. I wanted to throw in my last hard drive. I didn't want to change too much at one time just because, you know, it's like back to that troubleshooting thing of baby steps. I wanted to just swap everything over and then add my hard drive. I also have another set of same exact memory sticks. So this should give us 64 gig of RAM. 32, it kind of ran close to what I was running against, especially when I was using a lot of things like Plex transcoding and RAM. ESP home cache and RAM and yeah this just gives us lots of room and why not we got the slot so let's just get it so we'll get this other 16 terabyte in here that'll start the process of we'll set that as a parity get it for parity replacement and then we'll move probably this drive actually to a data drive after that should give us I think that'll give us another, I think this is a 12 terabyte, so it'll give us another 12 terabytes of data space in the Unraid. All right, got our four memory chips. Should give us 64 gig of RAM. We'll put our fan, slap it back on there. Pretty easy to, you know, upgrade your RAM or whatever. Just that fan slides on top. And, um, yeah, I've been noticing I've been getting some high temperature sometimes when i get a lot of you know files swapping around on this is my secondary drive the other nvme drive is under this little heat sink here i think it's just a regular 970 this 970 plus gets rather warm sometimes and i guess because i'm moving several gigs of data at times and it gets like 130 at times i've tried heat sinks but it makes it worse so really i just have this extra 120 fan that I set here in the case and blows air across it. It seems to cool it down a little bit, but is there a better solution or should I really be worried about the temperature? What temperature should I be worried about with the 970 plus on this guy? Definitely let me know if there's something better I could do with mounting a fan or whatever. Or should I even care about it? Let me know down below. I've noticed one thing whenever the memory comes at default i guess it comes up as a slower speed and i always have to go in and change to you have it use the profile that's actually from the chip itself let me see if i can dig and find that setting again so in this particular one it's under the overclock settings and i go look up the extreme memory profile and it will be disabled i guess that's due to you know, compatibility reasons. But then once you do that, it does pull DDR5, six gigahertz, 30, which is exactly what this memory is. And I just leave it enabled in auto. I don't, not overclocking memory or anything, but I do want what I paid for. And once you reboot, get back into the BIOS, you can see it is set to the correct DDR speed using the profile. So I've been delayed on various things and projects for getting this one out here but the damn thing has been running freaking awesome. I love it. Um, I have a ton of different Docker containers on it. All the freaking CPU power this thing has. Pretty damn impressive. I'll have to show you real quick how long it takes to build an ESP home device. Yeah, we've got the two corals going on it. I've got the other drives in it. Um, everything I use it for is mainly like storage of especially YouTube videos, editing. I do have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, you know, that came with this motherboard. 
I had a previous add-on card for that because I only had gigabit and I like to, you know, drop bigger files across things. So I haven't played with ZFS I just on this, which is if you're new to Unraid on that, um, just a different file format for doing arrays. I have that on my other box. I have some footage of me building that one. I'll probably will release that even though it's kind of out of order and but screw the whole continuity thing, right? So this one, there's that other drive. You can see out that fan I talked about pushing air across it. I've got it at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't get any warnings on it. So it's kind of my junk drive. I throw a bunch of frigate stuff and logs and database for Home Assistant. And yeah, that's where I get into all of the Docker containers. So I run all of my Home Assistant, Home Automation things all in separate Docker containers. I don't do the HOS thing. I feel kind of locked down and I can't, you know, do what I want to do on that. And I didn't start out that way. So it feels weird to me. I started out using the Docker containers. I know a lot of people run HOS. That's perfectly fine. I do have one for testing purposes as well. Well, this is Windows 10 now, but you know, I have a little Windows VM there too. So you can do all the VM stuff if you like, or you can mix and mash, run some HAOS and then some, you know, in Docker containers, totally up to you how you want to do things. And this isn't just for smart home automation stuff. I do video compression stuff with handbrake. I just have some files. I have it using watch folders and I just drop, you know, files in there and it compresses them using the GPU because it has a pretty decent GPU on it. Um, do all the matter thing, got speed test servers, do the Plex thing for, you know, to all of our TVs, media server stuff, uh, database, uh, have some Z wave. There's a couple sensors, my weather flow. I've got every, tons of different containers. If you'd like to see kind of how my whole setup is, let me know, know down below. Maybe I'll just walk through and do an in-depth deal of how I do everything and all the different containers and how that's all connected and why I might do it that way. So since I promised, let's show something ESP home wise. I'm going to do a full build on this beast. Um, here's an ESP 8266. And just to show you clean build files, that way starts off fresh. We're going to hit install and I'm just going to let it build and just do the manual download just to see how slow it is. And sometimes it actually, the browser is too slow for the build and it automatically starts going and yeah, it's crazy. So it builds like a ESP8266 in like seven seconds. Um, let's do ESP32, my little garage door deal. Uh, just do clean build files and we'll hit install and manual download and let that one rip. So the other one was like what, 7.7 .7 or something like that. What's ESP32 going to do? Um, 6.95. So pretty quick. I am using the cache for the temporary files of ESP home to RAM. So that does speed things up a lot, but of course the processor. So that's pretty much my build of the Unraid box and swapping things over. If you want to see digging into some ZFS stuff, I've been pretty impressed with that. I'm curious to see how Unraid 7 deals with the expansion of that. Um, definitely let me know down below. And if you want to see some of that, like I say, I'll probably do that anyway, but Hey, I like to hear what people like to dig into on the whole Unraid stuff as well. I know they're doing some changes with the licenses and the pricing. And so do definitely, if you're looking at trying to get your different licenses and thinking about it, dig into that because they're going to be making some changes. I think they're going to be grandfathering the previous licenses into that. There is a whole article on unraid.net about the whole thing. So that'll do it for this one. I do appreciate all their Patreon members, YouTube members. Definitely couldn't do it without you. And y'all know the drill. Press on them buttons and y'all take care.